then don't fucking do it. The risk to reward ratio is a joke. The exercise you should never do is this dumb shit. At some point, you probably will get injured and it's probably gonna be in either bench press, deadlift, or squat. No, squats and deadlifts aren't dangerous, but not knowing how to brace your core or how to manage axial loading is what can mess you up. Take it from me, I started my fitness journey in my basement using this tiny bar and concrete bumper plates. I couldn't even do squats or deadlifts for the first few months because I didn't have enough weight or a rack. Once I got better equipment though, I started doing them two times a week and added a ton of weight very fast. I literally started at 120 pounds for the squat but then in just a few months i was repping out 255 pounds i continued to get stronger and training the movements harder than last time but eventually i started getting a lot of lingering lower back and hip fatigue bro each session i would come in making lego breaking sounds with every step i took and during some deadlift sessions even trying to pick up 315 would make my background like gojo was about to give me back shots and my form was fine too my torso was mostly neutral and i had good enough ankle and hip mobility for squats i wasn't ego lifting either so why were my hips and back so fucked up i had to look deeper than that and and here's what I came to realize. More weight on these spine loading movements means more fatigue you need to recover from, no matter how good your posture is. Two, my core was engaged terribly. Rather than bracing properly, I took these shallow breaths that left my torso to become a weak link. Three, since I was at a home gym, I had to do a lot of heavy barbell lifts that loaded the spine if I wanted to train my lower body. So fatigue on the lower back accumulated much faster. Combining all these factors, it was obvious I was going to end up just injuring myself if I continued. I even got minor injuries like the occasional strain or pull, especially because I was really hesitant to deload but i've managed to alleviate a lot of these issues by taking a step back and following these key steps that have allowed me to do shit like squatting 315 for 16 without a belt Axial loading comes from basically any free weight movement that requires you to stabilize your torso. Notorious axial loading movements include squats, deadlifts, standing overhead presses, good mornings, and bent over rows. Besides standing overhead presses and bent over rows, training the upper body doesn't really bring any axial loading issues. Things like calisthenics or bench presses don't directly load the spine. Even if you're hanging with weights, the forces on the spine are decompression, not compression. So tip one, utilizing variations. Once you get to around intermediate numbers, a 315 squat and four five deadlift you can't just keep doing the basics bro for example i've had horrific experiences deadlifting anywhere above one times a week once i reached around the 405 mark so what i did was swap it out instead by doing romanian deadlifts two times a week for a few months and it actually resulted in a stronger deadlift by the end of it so don't be scared of losing strength for choosing what variation to use i recommend you choose a movement that targets your biggest weak point instead of back squatting two times a week now i do front squats on the second session because my upper back giving out has been a weak point in my back squat basically for your main exercise you can either do a variation the second session or entirely swap out the exercise this is only for your main exercises though so if you want more volume like for your legs you can do machines or dumbbells not everybody has access to machines and dumbbells though so i got adjustable dumbbell handles that i can load up using my existing plates up to 80 pounds i also got a leg extension attachment that i can also load up with plates for extra quad volume sissy squats or assisted single leg squats work and for extra hamstring volume you can buy a nordic curl attachment that goes under your door tip two regulate your intensity i know you've been told to train a failure and i know it feels sick as fuck getting that last rep on deadlift lifts but for the lower body barbell movements i recommend stopping one to three reps away from failure or stopping on technical failure this simply means you stop the set once your technique starts to break down like you lose your core tightness your positioning due to fatigue during the set lastly tip three don't be a dick with your deloads the minor injuries i've gotten doing squats or deadlifts were during times i went for quite a few weeks without deloading you don't have to take full week long light training deloads though what i like to do is after usually six to eight weeks i will take a week to do only light work on the axial loading movements while continuing to train hard on the rest of my work i eventually do take deloads on the non-axial loading movements though having a scheduled deload will allow you to plan when you want to hit prs and make sure you aren't procrastinating deloading like i usually do also keep in mind that the stronger you are and the more axial loading exercises you do the more frequently you should be deloading what the first two tips help us accomplish is making us not have to deload as frequently by slowing down how fast we accumulate axial loading fatigue all right let's move on to how you're probably messing up your core engagement Most of us were taught the simple, breathe into your belly and engage your core every time you're gonna do an axial loading exercise, but there's more to it than that. And I know most of you guys are just taking shallow breaths because honestly, proper bracing sucks to do. For those who don't know, bracing is the ability to create intra-abdominal pressure around your spine by taking in air and contracting the muscles around the spine, mainly the abdominals. This pressure creates equal and opposite tension around the spine to hold it stable like guy wires on a radio tower. The more stable your spine is, the less fatigue and less injury risk you get. This is proper bracing. One 
contract your abs to tuck your ribs down and engage your glutes to set your pelvis under. Take a deep breath, keeping the contraction and your posture. Contract your abs again to finalize the brace. When you need to exhale, breathe out forcefully while keeping the contraction and posture. Then repeat from steps two and up to inhale again. When should you breathe during axial loading exercises? Never exhale or inhale while the weight is being moved. For squats, exhale, then inhale at the top before going down, like you're going underwater. For deadlifts, do the same thing, but for the first rep, you will have to inhale and set up your brace while at the bottom of the movement. For overhead presses, exhale and inhale when the weight is at the bottom, like when you've just unracked it. For bent over rows, you can either exhale and inhale at the top or the bottom. For other movements, a good rule of thumb is to just exhale and inhale when you are out of position you can comfortably pause in. Proper bracing is hard, but you can actually train specifically to get better at this new pattern of bracing. I want you to start with the 90-90 bracing drill I will link down below. It will be the foundation for every other movement you do. For training bracing, I would recommend doing it on your rest days or after your leg days. The goal is to not lose your ribs down pelvis tuck posture or your contraction while getting as many breaths as possible. If you lose either of those, then the set is over. You can make progress by adding more sets and more reps to your bracing exercises. Here's a simple progression map. Once you get 20 breaths on 90-90, then move on to planks and side planks. Once you get to 20 breaths of those, then try weighted variations, and eventually you can move on to more advanced exercises like bird dogs, stir the pots, and ab rollouts where you're actually moving the rest of your body while bracing. You'll probably notice once you start doing this that your brace gives out during your axial loading movements. This is fine and counts as technical failure. You should stop when your brace gives out, and future attempts will go better as you practice this new style of bracing. That's about it for bracing. What about the use of lifting belts to minimize fatigue and injury risk? Just using a belt isn't going to magically save your spine. You have to know how to use it and already have the foundational skill of bracing your core properly. A belt is just a tool to artificially improve your bracing ability by giving it something to brace against. This increases the amount of intra-abdominal pressure you can create and sustain, which is why you can usually lift more with a belt as your torso has more stability. How to wear it depends on the lift. You want it to be secure and tight, but still allow you to take deep breaths to expand around your core with air. I wear it above my belly button. To use it, literally just brace normally, but on the inhale, feel your core bracing against the belt and the extra pressure. You don't want to use the belt all the time since that can hinder core development. What I do is progress my lifts normally without a belt, and then towards the end of my blocks, or on days where my back is feeling unstable, I'll use it to get through the sessions on top sets. For back offs, I'll take the belt off. That's about it for using a belt. If you want to know the NSCA's recommendation, only use it when lifting above 80% of your one rep max. Well bro, now you know how to take better care of your axial loading, how to brace properly, and how to use a belt. I recommend incorporating all of these tips including getting yourself a belt of your own. You're probably somebody concerned about safety and my parents are too, I get you. So I got just a video for you right here to ensure your safety while lifting heavy ass weights. I even teach you how to fail bench safely without a spotter in a method I've done several times. And that's about all I have to share with you in this video today brother. There will also be a link to the discord server if you want to interact with me and other random fitness enjoyers. So what are you waiting for? Go start working and take action. You can like and subscribe if you'd like, and I hope you have a great day.